Luca. Greetings and salutations, everybody. Hop aboard the Millennium Falcon because it is a Han Solo episode of League Unlock. My name is Eric, and we're diving right into top four, the semifinalists of this year's Asian Games to the surprise of absolutely nobody on the planet, Chinese Taipei, Vietnam, China, and Korea. Mark and I have already talked about the disappointment of China and Korea being on the same side of the bracket. That means a wonderful opportunity for Vietnam or Chinese Taipei, which is actually going to be a very hype matchup, uh, getting at least one of them's guaranteed a silver medal at worst, which absolutely amazing for their respective countries. You know, it's going to be fantastic for them. Expected them to be fighting for bronze, but now they're going to be fighting for a gold medal. These are only best of threes. I know a little disappointing that we won't get a five game banger between China and Korea, but it's finally here. So we're going to do the full preview of that marquee matchup. We can talk lane by lane, player v player, teammate versus teammate. And if you start on top lane island, Bin versus Zeus, obviously. There's a little bit of history here when you're going back to MSI this year, which had the infamous now uh, bit of a whoopsie misplay in that Ken and Sion matchup out of Zeus. And that was a prime example of them, uh, of Zeus, maybe being a little tilted. I'll be honest, just, just a little tilted. Uh, he did not play to the same level that we are used to him seeing. That was not even in the finals where he was underwhelming a little bit. So this is maybe the biggest edge and the biggest question mark in this uh, entire matchup because Zeus has looked pretty damn good through the first few tournaments and pretty damn good with Kanavi as his jungler. Part of that, obviously, because Kanavi is 31 and 28. Yes, a 58 KDA in the first four games of these Asian games. He has been absolutely terrifying and has taken Zeus to another level. So combine that with Zeus looking for a little bit of revenge against Bin, BLG being on a bit of a downward trend to close out summer. And maybe you're feeling a little bit better about this matchup for the Team Korea side of things. But either way, Edge has still got to go to the way of Bin in this matchup because of the history and you know the body of work that we've seen throughout all of 2023 it doesn't matter if it's Jun or JJ they split times uh they split games in that first quarterfinal matchup for China Kanabi's getting a massive edge over both of them as we just highlighted how absolutely insane he's been on these carry junglers he's popping up on Nidalee and Belveth in these games so very excited to see him I assume both Jun and JJ are going to be playing because they're going to need an answer for what Kanavi is doing. Then you get to the mid lane and you say, who's subbing in? Who's going to match up against Knight? Because the last time this guy played internationally against some LCK mid laners, it was probably the best tournament of his entire career. I feel like you start with Chovy and see how he fares in that matchup because you go lane kingdom v lane kingdom in that matchup. But again, I, I would be shocked if this is a 2-0 either way. This has got to at least be going to game three. And whenever we head, whoever loses a game is going to be making a substitution. I just feel like that is an inevitability. So Korea loses, you sub Faker in for Chovy. And if China loses a game, Jun, JJ, whichever one starts, you imagine that's going to be the sub. But I think Knight is taking pride in matching up against either Faker anchovy both of them it doesn't matter this dude's at another level right now he's the best mid laner in the world one of the best players in the world and he's looking to take some pride to take down this korean lineup and defend the asian games title that team china won way back in 2018 but i mean night it's hard to say you give the mid lane an edge when you're going up against faker and Chovy, but that's exactly what i'm gonna say even with the kanavi effect night has been just that good but now it sounds like okay only the jungle's going good for team korea then you get to the bot lane and elk has been so damn good but the one dude who has been his kryptonite his nemesis the wall he cannot get over is Ruger. and you know what don't feel bad about that elk because 
literally everyone on the planet can't get past the wall that is ruler in 2023 and even for a lot of 2022 when you combine the bot lane together as a whole that's where the advantage goes even bigger in the way of Team Korea, if you're asking me, because Mako did not look good to close things out with EDG. I know he's one of the best leaders and shot callers that the LPL has ever had, but in a straight up 2v2, or even when it comes to team fighting, Kyria and Ruler is just at a different level than Elk and Mako. It really feels like, even though this event is in China, it feels like Korea they they have something to prove number one because they lost in 2018 both ruler and faker were even on that lineup so they're looking for redemption themselves and obviously you'd have the military exemption on the line national pride it it is absolutely going to feel like the gold medal match as we've already counted on many times i'm i'm leaning towards korea um just because how good kanavi is playing and how lethal ruler has been but you've already heard kanavi talking about matching up against knight he said he's going to give lots of attention to the mid lane because he knows how good knight is and yes kanavi true that homie true that uh but ruler is in another stratosphere right now obviously these are all world-class players across the board just but just feel like because Zeus has leveled up with Kanabi in the lineup, now there's really no weak point in this Team Korea lineup, whereas you might have a weak spot in the jungle and potentially the bot lane for Team China. But hey, Korea were massive favorites in 2018 as well, and China ended up taking them down. It was basically a full uh, RNG lineup back then. We've got a full JDG lineup when you combine Korea and China right now, but I'm taking Korea. It's going three games, no question. We're not getting any stomps. These teams are too good. Real quick on the other side, Vietnam, uh, Chinese Taipei. Uh, harder one to pick. Who's going to win that one? I want to side with Vietnam because they were getting some 16 minute games, absolutely dumpsters uh, in their favor. And they've been kind of starved for international competition really ever since COVID. So I'm, I'm giving Vietnam the edge. Uh, we'll either make noise in the gold medal match Probably not, but I got Vietnam taking a game. That's right, doesn't matter if it's Korea or China, we're going full distance, Vietnam's gonna get a win, but they're not winning the gold, that's just, Korea and China are too damn good. Build up to Worlds is coming, and we got some news about the anthem. The song coming into this year's event, and I'll say it right away, I'm not a K-pop guy, but new jeans, you know, they're coming in, going to be the artists on this one. Who knows what the features are going to be. And uh, their rise to stardom is absolutely insane. A billion streams in less than a year is absolutely nutty. Uh, obviously, massive fan base across the world. K-pop works super well with all of these uh, songs in the League of Legends universe usually. But what I'm most excited for is that they're getting the story of Deft. This was easy. As soon as Worlds ended last year, they were probably planning the next anthem to say, well, everybody really liked Rise, and that was the story of ambition, overcoming so many obstacles and hurdles to finally win his first World Championship. What an incredible story. I mean, the Deft story is that exact same thing, just on steroids. So I... Can only imagine that they're going to be taking a lot of the stuff that they did from Rise and implementing it into this world. The little teaser audio clip that we got, it's a little bit more orchestral. You had some choir voices, some 808s that were slapping. Sounded good. I love the orchestral uh, theme to it. I know Rise was kind of, uh, you know, the vocals were a little bit punky kind of some of the stuff there. So seeing the K-pop combined with what we're going to get is orchestral. That, that's an interesting combo, assuming that that's the teaser is the full song that they're going to be using. I've never really seen um, that orchestral 808 style stuff with K-pop. So very excited, tentatively excited. At least we're getting lots of news. I think it was October 3rd or 4th, so about a week from now when we're going to be getting that title song to drop for Worlds 2023. But having Deft as the main character, thank you, best based Rito for implementing that. I think everybody would have been disappointed if that wasn't going to be the case. We'll be back with Mark to break down uh, the Asian Games final and maybe we'll talk about the world's uh, theme a little bit more. But now we're getting ever so close to the World Championship finally kicking off. I know I'm just frothing at the mouth to have some games to talk about uh, that we can actually kind of go through the highlights because let's be honest, pretty hard to find them. 
for these Asian games, but World's just around the corner and this World Song should be enough of an appetizer to get us excited. But thank you all you beautiful people for watching as always and we will catch you on that flippity flip.